to ensure that we have everyone on the line. Um, older person Ackley. Here. Older person Feldy. Here. Older woman Donahue. Here. Older person Decker. Here. Older person Sorensen is here. All right. Um, for those in attendance, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. we got a few things on the agenda. Um, why don't we go around, um, It is since it's a new session, we'll just kind of go around, introduce staff members and folks that are in the public, um, and then those that are online. Um, so we'll just do a quick quick introduction of committee members and staff. Um, my, per my name is Ryan Sorensen, Elder Person District 8, um, Chairperson for this committee. Uh, Elder Person Dean Decker, um, 6th District, and Vice Chair of Committee. Chuck, Chuck Adams, City Attorney. Let me just kind of weave through the aisles here. Cool. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, Moving along, well, um, is there a motion to approve the minutes from our April 15th meeting? So moved. There's been a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right. There's been a second by, was that older person Donahue? Yep. All righty. Any questions on our minutes from our previous meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Chairperson, chairperson votes aye. The minutes are approved. Moving along, um, 3.1, hearing to appeal of Chad Sheldon finding his dog to be a vicious animal pursuant to section 18-47I2 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code. City Attorney, should I turn it over to you? Yes. Okay, so um, just to, for the committee members just to understand a little bit about how this will work. Um, this is a hearing, uh, I will be representing the interests of the committee, so I don't represent either the um, police department or uh, the appellant, uh, Mr. Shelton. Uh, police department is going to present its case, uh, and Mr. Shelton will present his case. Um, the process that uh, we recommend using, and uh, my understanding is will, will be used, uh, first, uh, this is an appeal, um, and that, that is important because what that means is that the Chief's determination is considered to be an initial determination. Uh, so the first thing he'll do is just simply present that initial determination uh, and the reasoning for it, uh, sort of in the form of an opening statement. Uh, then we will give Mr. Shelton the opportunity to present a brief uh, opening statement again, presenting his reasoning uh, for contesting the determination. And then we'll move to the hearing uh, and the parties will present any evidence that they choose at that point. Um, the uh, police department will go first, Mr. Shelton will, will go second, and they'll be able to present any testimony, any photos, exhibits, um, et cetera. And I'm sorry, I, I made one error. It's actually Mr. Shelton who's going to go first uh, when it comes to the uh, hearing portion of it because uh, he is the appellant and he holds the burden of proof. Um, the uh, committee should be careful that as you listen to the evidence, uh, you should consider only evidence that's relevant uh, to the question. Uh, evidence is only relevant if it relates to whether the dog is actually vicious as defined in the ordinance. And uh, so in preparation for that, I'll let you know what the, the issue is, uh, uh, whether the dog, is, the dog in question was vicious. And pursuant to our ordinance, a dog is vicious if it does any one of the following things. First, causes a serious injury to or kills a person or a domestic animal. Second, causes an injury by biting a person in the face or neck. Third, attacks a person in such a manner as to require defensive action to prevent bodily injury or property damage when that person is conducting him or herself peacefully 
and lawfully on property other than that of the owner of the attacking dog. Fourth, attacked a person in such a manner as to result in property damage or an injury to the person when that person is conducting him or herself peacefully and lawfully on property other than that of the owner of the attacking dog. And fifth, uh, attacked without provocation, another animal or fowl on property other than that of the owner of the attacking dog. It is also considered vicious uh, in a couple of other circumstances. Um, if it's owned, harbored, or trained primarily or in part for the purpose of fighting, if it's previously been found to be vicious in a trial on the charge of violating our vicious dog ordinance, or it's been declared to be vicious in another municipality, county, or state. But I don't think those are at issue uh, today. So I think it's going to be one of the first five. Once you've heard the matter, uh, you will be able to convene in closed session uh, to deliberate. Uh, although any action you choose to take will be taken in open session. There is a closed session on the agenda as well as coming back into open uh, session. The rules of evidence uh, don't apply uh, in this case, so hearsay is permitted. Um, however, you should be careful to weigh all of the evidence from both sides as to whether it is believable, truthful, and relevant uh, to the issue at hand. So given that, I think We'll start with the process uh, first of just having the chief uh, present uh, sort of in the form of an opening statement the basis uh, for his uh, determination that the dog was considered vicious. And what we'll do is we'll have, uh, we'll ha always have one person at that microphone and uh, if there are witnesses, we'll have them uh, at that microphone. Or if Mr. Shelton, when he's asking questions, chooses to use this microphone, then his witness will be at the other microphone. So Chief, you may uh, proceed first. Good afternoon. So uh, the basis for this case is that on March 4th of 2020, um, police department employees were dispatched to uh, 1026 Swift Af Avenue to investigate a, a dog bite. Um, upon their arrival there, they determined that an adult female, Deborah Berry, received a serious injury to her leg from a dog bite, which consisted of uh, basically a softball size avulsion or tearing um, to her thigh. Um, it was determined that the dog that was involved is a cane corso dog that lives in the lower of that residence named uh, Cronus. So Cronus was deemed vicious based off of that and based off of the history that from 2015 up until this incident, the dog been, has been uh, involved in five other bites. That's all I got. Okay. Uh, then Mr. Shelton, you at this point, it's just uh, an opportunity for you to sort of present sort of an opening statement as to why you're uh, contesting it, and then uh, we'll get into the evidentiary portion after that. Um, it's really quite simple. I have two identical black dogs, and they have incorrectly determined which dog had bit, despite testimony from both my wife, who was the person handling the dog at the time, and myself, who was inside with the other dogs at the time. Also, Cronus has not been involved in five bites. That is um, simply false. I don't know where they're getting that from. I would like to see what uh, they have for that because Cronus has only ever been involved in two bites. One was a person breaking into my home and one was a person who was on my property. And those are the only two bites Cronus has ever been involved in. Everything else that has ever happened has been Persephone, as we have testified to, stated to the police on multiple occasions. I have called and tried to rectify this situation multiple times and been told that all I can do is come in and do things, and I keep trying to explain to them that with my stage four metastatic colon cancer, that it is very hard for me to arrange these kinds of things around my chemotherapy and just being sick. In fact, right now I feel as though I need to throw up because I just got off of chemotherapy again today. Okay, is that uh, your opening statement then? Yes, sir. Okay, 
So then you may, uh, you will proceed with your portion of the hearing with your evidence. Um, you may call any witnesses, including yourself, um, and it's up to you in who you call and when. Okay. Um, Do I have to swear people in? Yeah, uh, we'll, uh, we'll swear them in if once okay. he calls them. Yep. Do you need me to be sworn in or something? So are you calling yourself as your first witness? I, I think I'll call myself as my first witness. Okay. okay. Do you want to swear him in or I can, or, I, I can do that? This is okay. the fun part. Okay. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me God. All right, thank you. Please proceed. All right. Um, so since I'm the questioner and the witness, I'm just going to kind of talk instead of asking myself questions. Right. Um, can you just speak up a little bit just so <coughs> the folks <coughs> online can hear? Speak into the microphone so people on, we can hear, but I want to speak to is this better? Yep. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, I have Cane Corsos. They are large, powerful dogs that require specialized, you know, training to handle properly. One of my dogs was sold as a puppy to a family that did not know how to handle her. They returned her after about a year as an aggressive dog. I have been working with her for the past two years to try and rehabilitate the aggression that she has developed. And it has been a long, hard road. I have many thoughts about what I need to do about Persephone, but the bottom line is that it has not been Cronus. Cronus is a good dog, and if you would allow me to bring him in here, you guys would all be able to pet him on his belly as several police officers have done so in the past. In fact, Chief Domogolski himself knows that I have taken the citizen's police course and brought Cronus with me where he interacted with many of the other citizens and police and has interacted with officers such as Officer Inger, and several others on many occasions, not a single time have they ever found him to be dangerous or vicious in any way, shape, or form. Cronus is a good dog and does not deserve to be in a shelter right now and deserves to be at home with his family where he is loved and cared for. Furthermore, listening to Mr. Adams describe the uh, circumstances of being able to find a dog vicious, None of my dogs have ever bitten anyone off of my property, ever. None of my dogs have ever killed another animal or attacked anyone off of our property. There has never been an incident that was not responded to at 1026 Swift Avenue. Um, in fact, on this last case, the case that Chief Domogolski brought up March 4th, 2020, they decided that somehow it was three of my dogs, the two that look alike and another one that doesn't look anything like them, that caused this one bite to this woman. Despite the fact that we told them that Cronus was in bed with me at the time, I woke up to a dog barking and then a scream. I ran out to see that there were no dogs outside at the time. However, my wife, Melissa, had been bringing Persephone in at the time, so it was easy to determine that it was Persephone who must have done it since Cronus was in bed with me. Therefore, it would have been a physical impossibility for him to be out in the hall and have bitten somebody while simultaneously lying in bed with me. I think that's about all I have for my portion of my testimony. If this is the time where I would be cross-examined. Yes, so Chief, if you uh, have any uh, questions for Mr. Shelton. Uh, Mr. Shelton, can you tell me who lives with you on Swift Avenue? Oops. Yeah, good. Okay. Repeat yourself, please. 
Currently, no one. Okay, what about on March 4th? No one. Um, and can you describe the setup of, of the residence there? It's a two-story house with... Oh, are you asking if there were tenants living there? I'm sorry, Chief. No, I'm not, no, I'm, no oh, you're oh, fine. Oh, okay. I'm not trying to give dishonest testimony here. Yep, no, you're fine. Okay, yeah. No, it's a two-level house with one family downstairs and one family upstairs. And, and you're essentially the, the manager of the property, is that correct? Yes, that would be a correct assessment of that. Okay, and then do you have tenants upstairs? Yes, I do, sir. And can you tell me who they are? They are Demetria Berry and her children. Nobody else is supposed to be up there. Okay, do you know um, who Deborah Berry might be? That's her mother who has been staying there unlawfully despite the lease clearly stating that nobody else should be up there. Okay, are you aware of whether Deborah Berry was there on, on the day that we're talking about? She must have been considering the fact that I had to help her get situated and all of that, so. Okay, can you tell me about what, what happened that you had to help her? I just did. I was lying in bed with my dog Cronus when I heard a bark and a scream and I ran outside to see Melissa tending to Deborah. And, and where in the residence were they located? In the back hall. And um, to tell me what happened then. What, what steps did you take to care for her? I applied a towel and pressure to the wound and called 911. So you personally called 911? Uh, someone was on the phone with 911. I made sure of that. But you didn't call 911? I don't believe so. Do you know if Melissa did? It was either Melissa or one of the tenants. It was a very chaotic moment. I was more concerned with making sure that there was not profusive bleeding and that everything was, you know, progressing towards getting her the medical care that she needed. Can you describe the injury to me? It looked like a laceration. I've seen dog bites before. It looked like a dog bite. Would, would you call it a serious injury or not? I would say that the level of injury is very determinant upon your level of experience with things such as this, but I would not classify it as a minor injury. It was definitely moderate at a minimum. So I'm going to move this, this whole group of things here for you. I'm going to show you what's marked as item 11. That was taken at the hospital and was not what it looked like when I initially saw it. This is the first time I'm seeing this. So yes, I would describe that as a pretty severe injury. And so you would identify that what's been marked as, as item 11 as Deborah Berry's leg? Yes. Yeah, and you would say that that's a serious injury? It, serious enough. Can, can you describe to me um, essentially um, the exit of how people who were the tenants in the upper would get out of your residence. They come down the stairs and through the back hall. And so there's a common hallway there. It's a common hallway. Do you have any rules for them about when they can exit their residence and when they can't? Yes. Yeah, tell made, me about that. We have made it very clear to them that if they see the back door open, that we likely have the dogs out and that they just need to holler and let us know that they need to get through, and we bring the dogs in. So if, if somebody walks out of that back door on the second level, can, can they see from there whether the dogs are, are in or out? Yes. So if the dogs are at the bottom of the stairway there, they, they can see clearly that the dogs are there, they would know? Yes. At all times? Yes. In fact, They've lived there for over a year, and this is the only incident that happened because they did not follow the instructions. Uh, are you aware of um, when the police were there investigating this incident, any information that they found out about what happened a prior, the day prior or two days prior? No, uh, they tried to say something about someone else had been bit, but there was never any evidence or case or anything we never like I don't know what that is all about because nobody was bit so I don't know 
So it's your testimony here right, right now that, I hope I got to find the right one. A day or two prior that there wouldn't have been a woman that would have been up visiting them that would have left the residence and got bitten in the hand by one of your dogs. Not that I'm aware of. I, I was not aware of any other bites and when the police excuse me when the police told me that they had heard that there was another bite just two days prior I told them that I was unaware of that and that I don't know what anyone is talking about so you never talked to the woman named Natalie no sir and you never sent her any text messages uh, there were text messages what were the text messages for she was texting and sure what what was the conversation between you and her in the texts nothing about a dog did did you off uh, did you pay her any money no sir you didn't pay her twenty dollars not to call the police and report the incident no sir So I've given you what's been marked as item 16, and it's a screenshot of a text that says Chad on the top, and, and then the conversation that's present there is from one side. It says, I'm not mad, Chad. Please don't be mad at me. I didn't know. And then there's a response that would be from Chad, I am not mad. I was freaked out because I was in the bath and thought it was Deborah who got bit at first, which she knows better than to walk out with the door open. And then the response from the person named Natalie, who we've spoken to that provided this to us, that said, I'm so sorry, I don't want to cause any problems. And then a response from Chad, no, we are sorry and hope that the care and money help set things right. So are you saying you didn't send that or the other no, text sir. messages that I have? No, sir. No? And, and you do understand that the ordinance, um, the way that it's spelled out, if somebody is on their own property, so if you have a tenant and they're in their residence or in a common hallway that is the only exit, that wouldn't be on your property. That would be common property that's open to the tenant. And if your dog bit them in that area, that wouldn't be covered by the ordinance. It still doesn't make it Cronus who bit. That's not the question that I asked you. Well, that's the only issue at stake today is whether or not Cronus <laughs> is vicious. Okay, so when I ask you questions, I'm going to ask that you respond to the question that I'm asking, okay? Okay. Okay. Do you understand that that is common property and is not covered by the ordinance? Sure. As long as we can agree that it wasn't Cronus who bit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So are you aware of any other dog bites that, that the dogs have been involved? Well, let me back up once. So tell me what you told the police on that initial day when they responded to Deborah getting bit. I told them that Cronus was in bed with me. And so if, if I told you that, that in the officer's reports, they very, very clearly document that you said that you were in bed sleeping and heard someone screaming but didn't say anything um, about a dog being in bed with you, then he you didn't would say report that, that that's not true? I am saying that he did not report it properly then because I very clearly stated that Cronus was in bed with me, which is what I have stated every single time I have talked to anyone at your department about this. Okay. And if I told you that, that the officer clearly has document that you advised that you didn't know if it was one of your dogs that bit her, that, 
that that's uh, the officer making a mistake again, too. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? That if the officer documented that you said that you didn't know who bit her and that you didn't believe that it was one of your dogs. What I said was that when I woke up, all of my dogs were in the house. So all of your dogs were in the house, so one of them didn't bite her, that it was some other dog from down I the said street or I something. Had, I was asleep and woke up to a dog bark and screaming. I quickly looked around and saw all of my dogs in the house. That is what I reported to the officer. That is the truth of the matter. I later found out that Melissa was bringing Persephone in. So, so you're saying that you don't know which of your dogs bit Deborah? No, I do know which one bit because it was a black dog. Melissa was bringing Persephone in and Cronus was in bed with me. Ergo, logically, it must have been Persephone. And were, were any of your dogs licensed at this point? No. And had Cronus previously been deemed as dangerous? Yes, when you guys incorrectly reported that it was Cronus who bit back in March of 2019, taking the word of a junkie prostitute over me and my wife. Um, and so when, when that dog was deemed dangerous, were there any steps that you were required to take by city ordinance um, I was never to told care for of your any. dogs? I was never told of any. You weren't told of any? Okay. Um, so tell me about the other dog bites that, that your dogs have been involved in. It is really quite simple. When I was living at another address off of 13th Street, a man tried to break into my home and Cronus bit him. There was another incident where my dog Rhea had bit the neighbor. However, they claimed that it was Cronus who bit. So you guys found it to be Cronus who bit. Then, okay, hang on. Let's talk about, let's talk about that once so you're talking about in, in 2015. I believe so. Uh, you would have been living at, um, would May you have I been 1508, down, would it have been? May I sit down, please? Uh, you could pull a chair over and try to adjust the mic. Sure, that would be fine. Thanks. Here, sir, you can use this. Thank you. So would you have been living at 1508 South 13th at that time? Yes, sir. And this would have been on July 28th, 2015, do you think? That sounds about right. And your, your neighbor would have been? Ed, I believe. Edward Fighter, right? Yes. 1506 South 13th Street? Correct. And can you just describe, what dog do you say it is that, oh, I'm sorry. So sorry. That's okay. You know, the, the other option is, is if you want to adjourn this and try again in two weeks, that might be better. We can always do that. Absolutely not. I am not leaving my dog in a shelter for another okay. hour. Okay. Okay. 
and and so it's it's your testimony here. I believe your question was whether or not I was testifying that it was Rio who had bit, which is what I had told the officers at the time and still contend to this day. Okay, and what, what color was Rhea? Can you describe Rhea? Rhea is a tannish color known as fawn. Okay, so Rhea's tan. So if I told you that Mr. Fighter said that um, he was in the yard where he lives, um, and there were three dogs outside. One was on a leash and two weren't. One of the dis dogs he described as a large black male jumped on, up on him and bit him in the right arm. And that he had then gone to the hospital and received several stitches in the back of his right bicep um, from that bite. W would you agree that that's true? I would agree that Cronus jumped. However, it was Rhea who bit. And were you present there when it happened? Yes, sir. Is there any is there any reason why the victim would say that it was the black dog that bit him and not the tan dog? He was an older gentleman. Two dogs jumped at him. He wasn't sure which dog had bit him, and so he just saw the larger black dog, I would assume. What if I told you the officer went back to Mr. Fighter um, several times and each time he insisted that it was the large black dog and not the tan dog that jumped up on him and bit him? I saw both of them jump and I saw Rhea bit. I know what I saw and I would assume that it was a chaotic situation that was frightening for him. So I don't blame him for not having the facts straight. And was Melissa present then? Yes, she was. And did she tell you which dog that yes, it was? Yes, she did. What if I told you that told you that she told the police that that she wasn't sure which one bit him? It's possible that she said that. And do you remember talking to Officer uh, Hubrixie about this case? Not specifically, no. And so, if if I told you that. Um, If you look in what's been marked, if you look at what's been marked as item five, um, in the third paragraph, he documented that when he was talking to you, um, that you said that you were concerned because you were afraid that, that he was going to take the dog away from you. Okay. Do you believe that that is something you would have said? I, I wouldn't deny saying that. So, so that's definitely a concern of yours, that if your dog bites somebody, that there's, there's a possibility you, you could lose that dog. Uh, I believe that's probably the concern of any owner of a large, powerful dog. Okay, fair enough. Appreciate that. Um, I'm then going to try to draw your attention to um, 2018. And are, are you familiar with any, any bites that your dogs would have been involved with in 2018? Yes. So are you familiar with one that may have occurred on December 2nd of 2018 when Officer uh, Retzer got 
sent to Memorial Medical Center to investigate an animal bite complaint with a party um, by the name of Joseph Winkler, yes. who at that point was living at 1026 A Swift, so in the upper residence where you currently live. Correct. Tell me what you remember about that. I remember that Melissa was walking the dog and that Joseph came around the corner and that even though the dog was on the leash, that they were too close and that the dog jumped up and bit him. And which dog was that? I actually don't recall. I would like to provide honest testimony, but the chemotherapy affects my memory, and I honestly don't remember that incident very well. How, how well did Joseph know your dogs? Mm, they never interacted with them. Okay, if I told you that it was Cronus, would you agree with that or not? Mm, I wouldn't agree with that the same as I wouldn't deny it because I want to provide honest testimony and I cannot recall at this time. So would Melissa know which dog it was if she had it outside and it was on a leash? Are you asking me to testify for someone else's memory? Nope, I'm asking you if you believe that Marissa, Melissa said that she had Cronus out on a leash, that I, that's what it would be. I don't. If Melissa says who she had, then I would say that she probably is correct. Okay, if, you, if the dog that you quarantined regarding that bite was Cronus, w would you agree with that? Uh, again, I do not remember the specifics of this case. If I show you an, an animal bite quarantine that you brought back to the police department. Chief, we don't need to waste time. If you're telling me that it's Cronus, then I'm telling you I don't remember, so... You know. What I need to do is make a record so that the older people that, that are here um, can determine what the facts are and make a decision based on that. So I'm going to show you what is what I'm marking as item 17. So item 17 is an animal quarantine form that shows that uh, Chad Shelton took the dog um, Cronus to the Sheboygan Animal Hospital to have it quarantined regarding the incident that we just discussed. And then, Chad, my next question would be, are you aware of uh, another bite that happened uh, 13 days after that on December 15th of 2018, where the victim was uh, Joseph Winkler again, this the same person. No. So you, you don't remember at all, um, two weeks after that, Joseph Winkler, again, leaving his, his residence. Um, and as he was walking out of the, the residence, um, Cronus again ran up to him as he was walking to his car and latched onto his right arm and would not let go. Um, and then Melissa had to come running up out of the residence and pull the dog off of him. That sounds a little far-fetched considering that I know my dogs and if Cronus had latched on to someone and refused to let go, they would be looking at major medical surgery. And so as far as you're concerned at this point, it just didn't happen? I don't have any recollection of it happening. I do recall Joseph Winkler being bit one time by one dog. I do not remember the specifics, although you have shown me that it was Cronus who was quarantined, so. In those, in those same, um, uh, reports that I, I left for you right there. Wrong way. 
There's an item in there that's marked as item eight. And it, and it looks like this and it's the clothes with the holes in it from where the dog bite occurred. Clothes with holes in them? Yep, and tearing in the clothes. So that picture is right in that pile in front of you if you want to examine it. But no medical record, no police report? Yeah, there's a police report. It's in there. And you're welcome to look at that. And that one would be marked as... Where are the pictures of the wounds? As item... It's not six... As, as item seven. So that's the report that documents the second bite, which occurred on December 15th of 2018. There pictures of the wounds. Uh, there aren't any pictures of any wounds for that one, just Why? the reports. Why? So, Mr. Shelton, at this point, uh, you'll have the op opportunity to ask questions later, but at this point, uh, you're answering questions from uh, Chief Domagalski. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, then I would ask you if you remember uh, a bite that um, one of your dogs was involved in on March 2nd of 2019. Yep. Tell me what you remember about that. I remember that Melissa was coming in with Persephone and Alyssa was hiding behind the door. And so when Melissa went to close the door, suddenly there was somebody standing there and my dog reacted. And do you know who was standing there? Alyssa. Alyssa, and who's Alyssa? A dead woman. A dead woman. A at the time, was, was she your tenant upstairs? For four days, well, for two days at that point. And was, had she left her, her residence and was walking down the back stairs when she, when she got hiding bit? hiding behind the door. <laughs> Why might she have been hiding? I have no idea. Would it, could it possibly have been to get away from your dog? She had been standing there since before Melissa opened the door, so I don't know what she was doing. Were you present there with Melissa? Not at the exact moment. So you weren't there when it happened? I was at the house. Were you there where it happened and you could see hallway. what happened? I was not in the hall. Okay, thank you. And, and uh, I would just ask that uh, one person speak at a time. And so um, in the packet are, are what's been marked as items two, three, and four. And so those are, are pictures of two puncture wounds on, on Alyssa's forearm, um, a torn sleeve from a jacket that she was wearing, and then three puncture wounds um, to her calf. Would, would you agree that those are the injuries that Alyssa um, had? I actually never was made aware of what the injuries were. Okay, and, and would you agree that um, if you were a tenant living in the upper and these dogs were, were downstairs and you had to be concerned um, every time that you tried to leave your residence of whether or not that you were going to get bit, that that would create um, an unreasonable amount of fear? No. Okay, thank you. Um, Tell me about your contact with Officer Hang when he tried to investigate that dog bite complaint. Officer Hang was very um, exuberant in his desire to prosecute this case, so much so to the point that he would pound on my door for 15 minutes at a time, multiple times a day. I caught him peeking in my living room windows. I told him on several occasions that I had no desire to speak to him. Despite that fact, he continued mm -hmm. to try and disrupt 
my home life as much as possible for weeks at a time until I finally had to speak to one of your captains and tell them that I was considering filing a harassment lawsuit at this point. And, and so the question that I would ask you is, if, if you get bit by a dog, do you believe that it's reasonable that the police would try to investigate that to determine which dog is involved? I believe that Officer Hang's response was not only unreasonable, but unlawful. My Peeking in my windows is a violation of my right to privacy. My question is, do you believe it, that it's reasonable for the police to investigate when a dog bites someone? I believe that it is reasonable for the police to investigate up to the point of the law, but once you begin to violate someone's right to privacy, that you have exceeded your authority and are unlawfully and unreasonably attempting to harass someone. Can, so can you describe for, for me and for the older people then what, what is reasonable for them to investigate? What, what do you mean by that? What's allowed by the law? Chief Domogowski, you know full well that you and all of your captains, lieutenants, sergeants have my number well on hand and that you guys can get a hold of me at any time and have many times. You guys could have called me, spoken to me. You could have let me know that an officer was coming by at a certain time, pounding on my door day and night, not showing any respect for the fact that you're riling up my dogs, that is not reasonable. So the incident that we're talking about occurred on March 2nd in the evening at uh, about 9.30. And if Officer Hang called you on the next day on March 3rd at 6.30 and talked to you on the phone and asked you if he could come over and talk to you about it, and you told him that he could, um, and then when he arrived at 7.15, you told him that you didn't have time and that he should try again. Do, do you believe that his effort to call you and then come over is reasonable or not? I believe that I told him that if he was able to come right then, that I would be able to talk to him. 45 minutes later, I was no longer available. Okay, and so again, do you think it's reasonable that, that the police department would want to know because they're required by state law to investigate these incidents to know what dog is involved so that they can do any follow-up that they need to going forward from that? He had been told which dogs were involved. So he was told when which dogs were involved, on the second or on the third? Uh, I believe on the third when I talked to him on the phone. Um, do you know if he tried to make contact with you on March 4th to talk to you about this? As I said, he continue, continued to try to attempt to make contact with me up until the point of violating my right to privacy by peeking in my living room window. So if I told you that the report said that he tried on the third and you told him to come over and then sent him away, then he called you twice on the fourth and you didn't answer, so he drove by your house and he saw your car there um, and so he knocked on the door to, to try to talk to you about this, you would say that that's unreasonable, that three days after it happened that you're still not talking to him. I have no comment on the reasonableness of that. My only comment is on the unlawfulness of peeking in my living room window. That's all I have. So Mr. Uh, uh, Shelton, uh, do you have any uh, redirect uh, in, in, in basically any testimony that you would like to give at this point. Redirect means that it is on any issue that's been brought up uh, during the uh, during the cross examination. I would just like to point out that it is highly unusual that there are no pictures of any of the wounds for the other two supposed victims. 
Do you have any other witnesses that you'd like to call at this point, Mr. Shelton? Yes, I do. Okay, who would you like to call? At this point, I would like to call Officer Hang. Okay. Now, Officer Hang, you can go up to the uh, mic. And you should swear him in. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right, thank you. Officer Hang, are you familiar with Alyssa Ruda's criminal record? Not all of it. What parts of it are you familiar with? Um, the first time I ran into her was with your dog, and then there was one other time where we ran into her, um, it was a medical call. Are you aware that she has been arrested for prostitution? I am not. Are you aware that she has had multiple drug issues throughout her life? If I could recall, probably one or two. I don't know her whole history, like I told you. But you were aware that she was on drugs? I, I can't say she was on drugs. Because, I mean, every time I made contact with her, it was, I can't determine she was on drugs. So what, in your police experience, led you to take her word over the word of myself and my wife? She said she was able to distinguish between your four dogs. Have you seen my dogs? I have seen... Now you have five dogs, I believe. I have four dogs currently, but... Well... Have you seen my dogs? Okay. I have not seen... Um... Cronus. You have not seen Cronus? No. Not even when the officers came by to take pictures? Take pictures of what? Of my dogs. When was that? During this last instance. No, I was not there with the last incident. Would you say that telling the difference between two identical black dogs in the night would be difficult to do. I don't recall what time it was when the dog bite happened. What's that? I don't recall what time the dog bite occurred. Fair enough. No further questions. Oh, wait, one question. Do you recall when you walked around to the side of my house and looked in my window? So I knocked on your front door and I know that the back door is where the common area is between the upstairs and downstairs, and you have a, and you have a door back there too. I just happened to be walking forward, walking back to my car, and I noticed that your window was open, and I was knocking on the door, and you wouldn't so answer. So you stopped and looked in my window and began to talk to me. Yes. And do you believe that that is within your lawful right? I, like I said, I was just walking on the side of your house, and then I saw you because I was trying to make contact with uh, quarantining your dog. Are you familiar with the right to privacy? Yes. So do I have a right to privacy in my living room? Yeah. So that would include having officers not look into my window and attempt to engage me in conversation. I didn't intentionally look into your room. Like I said, I was just walking back to my squad from the back and- Intentionally or not, I could have been in there fully nude doing whatever I wanted to do because it is my living room and I have a right to privacy. Yes, but then your tenant and also lives you upstairs. you violated that. Your, your tenant also lives upstairs. And like I said, I was trying to make contact with you at the front and at the back. And I just Officer happened to Officer accidentally glancing over into my window is one thing. Stopping and looking in my window and attempting to engage me in conversation is another. Would you agree with that? Sorry, repeat that. Accidentally walking past and glancing in my window is one thing. Stopping and looking in and attempting to engage me in conversation is quite another. Wouldn't you agree with that? Not necessarily. It's not like I intentionally looked through your window. So it's okay for me to come to your house, look in your window, and engage you or your family in a conversation. Relevance. So there's been an objection as to relevance. Mr. Shelton, do you uh, wish to respond to that? Yes, I do. The relevance is that they are trying to paint it as though I was unwilling to talk to the police. The simple fact of the matter is that Officer Hang's relentless and unlawful pursuit of talking to me is what caused any issues with wanting to talk to the police. Well, let me ask you this. The, the relevant issue here is whether or not your dog is vicious. How is this question relevant to whether or not your dog is vicious? 
Um, they're trying to say that they determined Cronus was vicious because I would not talk to them. I am simply pointing out how this came to be. Mr. Chair, you have the, you have the ability to make the uh, ruling as to whether it's uh, relevant testimony. Um, uh, my advice in this particular situation is that because it is not directly relevant to the issue of whether or not the dog was vicious, uh, that I don't believe that it is relevant. Objection that call. leading the alder person to a conclusion. I think, I think we're going down a rabbit hole here and I don't see the relevance to it. So if, if you want to wrap it up, that'd be great to this point. Otherwise we can keep moving along with questions. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what that was, but completely object to Mr. Adams trying to give the alder person a determination of what he should decide here. No further questions. Uh, I, for cross-examination, Chief, do you have any questions? Richard, in your, in your professional uh, opinion, um, does Alyssa have any motive um, that's connected to her um, record or possible record of prostitution or drug use that would cause her to lie about which dog bit her? No. Um, from from um, what you know about the case, do you believe that it would make any difference to Melissa one way or another? Which, which dog bit her? Is there a reason for her to lie about which dog bit her? No. That's it. The question isn't about whether she would lie about it. The question is whether or not she would know which dog. Do you have a question, Mr. Shelton? Not for Officer Hang. I would like to call my next witness. Okay, so Officer Hang, you may be seated. And who is your next witness? Melissa Shelton. Okay. Melissa Shelton, if you would uh, go up to the microphone up there. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Thank you. Please proceed. <laughs> Melissa, do you recall the incident with Ed, the upstairs neighbor, at 1508 South 13th Street? Vaguely, yes. What two dogs were off the leash? Cronus and Rhea. And from what you saw, <clears throat> which dog bit Ed? Rhea bit Ed, not upper shoulder. And you can tell this because Cronus jumped at his front and Rhea came around behind him, yes? Yeah, I came at his side. And so therefore for him to have a bite on the back of his arm, it could not have come from the front where Cronus jumped. Correct. <clears throat> Melissa, do you recall the incident on, oh crap, what did they say? March 2nd of 2019? with Alyssa? Yes, I recall that one. Can you describe what happened, please? I had taken Persephone outside on the leash to use the bathroom before I was leaving for work. This was probably about 8 p.m. Um, when I came back in, and went to close the door. Alyssa was behind the door. I did not even know she was at the residence as she wasn't moving in for another couple of days. And what happened? Uh, Persephone jumped at Alyssa. I pulled Persephone off because I had the leash and I took Persephone in the house And where was Cronus at this time? Cronus was with the other dogs in the house. I had only taken Persephone out because the other dogs have been, had been out prior to that. 
How long have you known Cronus and Persephone? Uh, Cronus since he was about six months old and Persephone, I've known her her entire life. So years? Yes. How long had Alyssa known the dogs? Uh, I don't think Alyssa had met any of the dogs, which I know that you suggest that any tenants that we have meet our dogs. So it is your testimony that Alyssa did not know any of our dogs, let alone which of the two identical black dogs was outside. Correct. Do you recall the incident on March 4th, 2020, with Deborah Berry. Yes, I do. Can you describe what happened? Uh, I was coming back from running errands and going to the grocery store. I had Persephone with me in the vehicle. I carried in groceries and brought Persephone into the back common hallway. And Persephone ran up the through the open doorway um, to the stairwell for the tenants upstairs. And I heard someone scream. And then I called Persephone back down and put her in the house and then went to see what happened. And it was Deborah on the stairs. So I came inside. I informed you that uh, she got bit, and I got a towel to for you to take to apply pressure. Do you know where Cronus was at the time? Uh, in the house somewhere. Again, it was a situation where I only had Persephone with me. And again, to reiterate, you would know which black dog you had with you since you have spent the majority of their lives with them, which is years, as opposed to the victims who had known the dogs very little, if at all? Correct. Have you been at... No further questions. Chief, do you have any uh, cross-examination questions? Melissa, regarding the, the March 4th one where, where Deborah got bit, did you tell the police that Persephone is the dog that ran up and bit Deborah? At the time, I did not uh, give a statement to the police about it because the prior incident with Alyssa, I did give a statement informing them that it was Persephone that jumped at Alyssa. I did not know about the bite until afterwards. Sometime afterwards, I just thought she jumped at her. With, with Alyssa? With talk, Alyssa. Talking about? Yeah. And but, Persephone was with me, with Deborah, and it was Persephone that jumped at Deborah and bit her. And we tried to contact the police and got towels, and I grabbed first aid stuff for Deborah because she had been bit. And is there a reason that you didn't tell the police that, that night that it was Persephone that had um because the last time I had made the statement that it was Persephone, um, they deemed it was Cronus. And um, so what do you feel, um, how, how do you feel that the, the tenants living upstairs would, would feel knowing that they um, have this risk of getting bit every time that they walk out their door to try to leave their residence? It's actually kind of a surprise to me because um, 
even Deborah and other people that came to visit the tenants when they were coming and going all would either open up the back upstairs door and holler or ask if it was clear or stand in the hallway and be like, can I come or go? Or do, do you and think it- just asking if the dogs were out and I made it clear to them that, you know, I would yell clear if it was clear and I would say wait and then take the dogs in the house if they were out. Sure. Do you think it's reasonable that they should have to do that? Or is it you and Chad's responsibility as dog owners to, to make sure that the dogs are secure and the tenants can can enter and leave their residence with, without any fear of any of this Objection. happening? Objection. We have no idea what the tenant's schedule is, and the dogs have to be let outside to use the bathroom. That is a completely unreasonable request for us to always have the dogs put away whenever the tenants need to come or go. So you're objecting to a question, um, but it appears to be that what you're really objecting to is, is the answer to the question. Um, is, there a, is there a relevance basis to your uh, question? Yes, as I just said, we have no idea what the tenant's schedule is, and to ask us to never have our dogs outside to use the bathroom because the tenants might be coming or going is completely unreasonable. So, uh, again, Alderman uh, uh, Sorensen, you have the chair, so you uh, get to make the decision on, on the objection um, here. Uh, it, ostensibly, it's an objection as to, to relevance. Um, I believe it's relevant. Chief, please proceed. What was the question again? You don't have to answer him. Do you, do you believe it's it's reasonable that that um, the tenants should have to that they shouldn't be able to freely come and go? Is is it your re yeah? Let me rephrase it. Is it your responsibility as dog owners to control the dogs so that the tenants don't have to worry about them? Uh, I'm not sure how to answer that. All the tenant agreement stuff Chad handles since I moved like three years ago but I come back and help because he's got cancer. Thank you. Do you have any redirect, Mr. Shelton, for uh, Melissa Shelton? Uh, yes. Melissa, when you informed the officer, Officer Hang, that it was Persephone who bit Alyssa, what was his response? Uh, he asked me if I was sure, and I said, yeah, because I watched her pee right before I took her back in. And what did he find? Uh, to my knowledge, they came to the conclusion that Cronus bit Alyssa. Despite the fact that both you and I testified that it was Persephone, and only one person who did not know the dog testified that it was Cronus. Correct. Thank you, no further questions. Melissa, you may have a seat. Uh, Mr. Shelton, do you have any other witnesses you wish to call? I'm sorry, I'm thinking for a moment. That's fine. No, I believe that is all. Okay, so you, you rest your uh, case at this point, is that correct? I still have a closing statement? Yes, you will have a closing statement. Then yes. Uh, Chief, then the case is yours. Uh, if you want to call any witnesses. Uh, no, so uh, at this point, I would make a motion to withdraw um, our designation of Cronus as a, a vicious dog. Um, and then we'll be just moving forward based on the testimony today and declaring Persephone as a vicious uh, animal. And then we'll be um, following through with the designation of Cronus as a dangerous dog and making sure that Chad follows the ordinance and puts in the, the things that he has to put in place in order to get Cronus back. Okay. So uh, based on that, uh, the chief has withdrawn uh, the determination uh, that uh, uh, Cronus is a um, vicious dog and uh, we don't need to take any further testimony at this point. So. And there's no need to go into closed session either. 
So, uh, Mr. Shelton, you understand that uh, what the chief has done is withdrawn uh, the finding that uh, uh, Cronus is vicious. Um, he's indicated that he will follow through with a finding of viciousness for Persephone. And uh, as I understand it, there already has been a finding that uh, Cronus is dangerous, so that remains in, in effect. Yeah, we're going to deal with that. Okay. Thank you. You're free to stay or go, whatever you want to do. <clears throat> okay. Do we have to vote on this then? There's not, no, he's okay. withdrawn it. So, okay. um, so you can I move on to your next item. Okie dokie. All right. Seeing that um, we've concluded the hearing, um, we will skip over closed session and we'll move right into 6.1 quarterly reports. Um, building inspection. Just chat. Yeah, just go over there. Thank you, Alderman Sorensen. Uh, in your packet, there is a the quarterly report for the building inspection um, department and. I guess what I would like to say is that although we're in the middle of a pandemic, um, our revenues in the department are only about 40,000 behind uh, where we were a year ago. Um, so the, if you look at the report, the, the big difference, is everything, the number of permits is obviously higher. They're at a lesser pr uh, cost than the, what they were in prior years. Um, we still collect permits. We have a number of people that are putting them in the city's drop box, mailing them to us. Building inspectors are meeting them outside, getting them, so we're still operational. We've done an online portal to allow people to submit the easier ones online, so we're still um, of service to people that are pulling permits. Um, the winter season, as we know, dragged out for just a little bit with the snow in March, so that's kind of hindered the that's kind of hindered the um, people from being able to come in, but all in all, I would say we're on track for hitting what was projected in the budget, and I don't see any real concerns as it relates to revenues on the building inspection side. Um, on the regular, uh, the inspection side, the number of inspections is lower because we have not started until um, the until stuff is starting to green up our baselines that we do for four neighborhoods as part of the strategic plan um, that's underway now. So the guys are out there and, and the police department beat officers and city development staff are walking property to property. So we're working on those four neighborhoods, two on the north side, two on the south side. Um, but the rest of the stuff is on track for um, meeting the goals. The only difference I would say is we're down one building inspector. We're trying to recruit a full-time building inspector. It's proven to be very difficult. We've got a retirement effective May 1st of a 30-year 30 30, uh, employee. And um, so we are running with one building inspector through the entire city. So um, yes, there's a lot of work and, and we're hoping to recruit as soon as we can. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions from any elders online? Okay, seeing none. Um, is there a motion to accept the report? Oh, discussion only, never mind. Moving along. Um, City Attorney's Office, Chuck. So uh, I did attach both in board docs and on the recommendations that those physically present have um, our quarterly performance report. Uh, you'll note that we've added a few new categories of things that we're tracking, including insurance claims and parking tickets, council documents processed, and contracts renewed. Those numbers are there for your review, and if you have any questions about them, I can answer them. Okay, any questions for the city attorney's office? Seeing none, that is just discussion only. Moving along, um, 3.6, we'll come back to Chief Domagowski. Um, 6.4, discussion regarding capital improvements project. Okay, police department will come back to the chief. Um, go to the fire chief then, 6.5.
All right, thank you. So the quarterly or the annual report was done uh, a few months ago, and, and I apologize, I didn't know I was supposed to bring it to the committee. So here it is. Uh, <laughs> it was attached to the. You should have a copy of it. Just some highlights, real quick. We were able to purchase a van for the uh, fire inspector program. We picked uh, also purchased a pickup as our new command vehicle for the shift commander, and a uh, aerial platform that we have in service. So thank you. If you have any questions, please let me know. We'll do 6.6 .6 as well, our own number. Oh, that one we have to vote on. You do have to. All those in yeah. favor of accepting the annual report? Or is there a motion to accept the annual report? Motion to accept. There's been a motion by Alder Decker. Is there a second? Second, Betty Se Ackley. Second by Alder Person Ackley. Any discussion or comments for the chief regarding the annual report? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Chairperson votes aye. That is approved. Thank you, chief. While you're up there, we'll jump to 6.6, .6, RO number 184-1920, um, the quarterly report for 2020. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the quarterly report, uh, we do have a couple new items in there. Um, real quick, we're about, just because of COVID, uh, about 1%, 1.5% less for call volume than we were at this time last year, but that's normal uh, just with the circumstances surrounding us. Uh, we do have a new uh, section in there with the under fire loss, and I just need to explain it so everybody understands what it means. So when we have a pre-incident value of buildings, so in this quarter we had 15 incidents, and that pre-incident value is a total of over 3 million, 3.6 million. So that is for the entire building. So when there's a fire, even if it's an apartment complex, if there's a fire in that building in one unit, that entire building is, is taken into consideration as a pre-incident value. So that's why it's so high compared to what the loss is, which is a total of about 237,000. So for those 15 incidences that we had in this quarter, uh, we lost, uh, due to the fire, $237,000 worth of damage, but the values were over 3 million. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So other than that, the report's in there for your review. If you have any questions, um, please let me know. Uh, is there a motion to accept the report? Motion to accept. There's been a motion by Elder Decker. Is there a second? Second. There's been a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Chairperson votes aye. That is approved. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Um, 6.7 capital improvements projects for the fire department. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, we are asking for um, what the packet you have is is there. So we, we just asked for a few uh, items each year, three items uh, each year. And, and real quick, we're, we're requesting an engine uh, in 2021, uh, ex extrication equipment, and uh, the phase, the largest part of it is the phase one, two, and three for station three, which is our headquarters station which they're doing some major uh, mechanical and uh, maintenance repair on the exterior of the building. So I just need approval to proceed. I don't know if you want me to go through every single year. I will be glad to. Um, to totally up to you. <laughs> I'm on the Capital Improvements Commission, so I already heard. I, 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 yeah. so I, <laughs> I don't know if any of the alders listening, if they want me to go over some of the large details, I'll be glad to. Anyone? Not for me. <laughs> okay. That's just discussion only. Um, so we'll jump back up to, um, thank you, Chief. Thank I appreciate you. Appreciate that. Uh, we'll jump back up to 3.3, our own number 185-1920 uh, by the police chief submitting the quarterly report. Chief? Uh, before I get started, I just want to say thank you to everybody for your patience. I know that was um, difficult, to say the least, but um, it's been a very difficult investigation over the last couple of years, and based on the, the size of the dogs that um, Mr. Shelton keeps and the increasing level of damage that's happening to people, I think it's important that we get to the bottom of it in this I think helped do that. So I appreciate your yeah, patience. Yeah, I appreciate the work that you and your team have done on that too. And thank you, Fire Chief, for grabbing the the receptacle and everything else. So, um, and then Kathy um, Barbfeldy 
is no longer in the meeting. Her power went out. So, oh, I saw a flash. Yeah, about five minutes ago. Yeah. Okay. She t she texted me. So Betty and, and Mary Lynn are still on. So Chief, <laughs> take it away. Okay. So the the highlights for the quarterly report, uh, part one, crime. There was. Uh, What's most notable, a reduction in violent crime for the period, um, 20 violent crimes uh, versus 43 in 2019. Um, so we're making some progress there. That's continuing up to the date, too. So I think the, the quarter that we're talking about, not much of it is COVID-related. Um, past that, I think what we're seeing will be COVID-related, but it's good, at least for that first quarter, to see that positive result. Um, traffic accidents were also down 360 versus 467. So there's about two weeks of COVID in there. So some of that is, um, but, but most of it um, is good reduction. Um, so I think that's a positive thing. And then before COVID hit, we got our um, in-service training done. So that's a positive thing. So everybody got um, at least 16 hours of training. And um, one of the things that we did was a capital project from last year that we um, finished up, the replacement of our pistols, so everybody got to transition and qualify with the new handguns. And then we were very timely in that we had just updated all of our personal protective um, equipment in our squads. And so we had gone over all of the equipment that's available there, face masks, um, cleaning supplies, gloves, masks, all of that kind of stuff. So it was, it's just really good that it was timely and, and we were ahead of the game and had inventory on stock. So that was helpful. And then Chuck and his team um, and corporation council helped us with legal update and that was um, done very well and I appreciate that. And then lastly, we did some updates on defense and arrest tactics. Um, the only other thing that, that I would mention is um, open records requests, um, again, can continue to rise, and a lot of that is uh, related to the, to the digital evidence that, that we deal with and the amount of digital information that's out there. So that's something that we're going to constantly be fighting. So those are the highlights. If anybody has any specific questions, I would be willing to answer those. Any questions? Okay. Um, another note, it looks like Betty's power just went out as well too. So Mary Lynn Donahue is still on the line, so we still have a quorum. Um, so Mary Lynn, hang I'm on. here. Don't, don't let your power go out. <laughs> We're wrapping it up. I'm here till 530. Okay, <laughs> we'll be done by then. Um, is there a motion to accept the report? There's been a motion to accept. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Chair votes aye. That is approved. Thanks, Chief. 6.4, capital improvements projects for the police department. Uh, so our capital improvement projects really, um, except for one project in 2021, which is the replacement of our computers in our squads. The computers are currently five years old. Um, so next year when we replace them, they'll be six years old. Um, five years is considered uh, end of life by the IT department. So we stretch that. It was a 2020 project that got moved to 2021 to kind of smooth out um, the dollars that were being borrowed. Um, so the rest of the program all the way through 25 is our vehicle replacement. And essentially what, what we do is our 14 main squads that are used um, 24 hours a day get replaced every four years. Previously, um, they were on a three-year replacement plan. We switched over from three to four years about eight years ago, and then all our other vehicles get replaced on a 10-year replacement plan. Um, so that really lays out um, the rest of the program. It's all replacement of, of vehicles and smoothed out so that the dollars are consistent every year, which was Daryl's request. Thanks, Chief. Any questions for the police chief? All right, that was discussion only. Um, we'll jump down to 6.8, discussion regarding liquor license renewal fees. Um, this, is, this is just um, an, an item that I asked to be included on the agenda. Um, I, I had a few bar owners reach out, and I believe other elders did too, just about um, some bars and taverns that only 
provide alcohol. Um, they don't have food, so they're not able to sustain themselves through this time. Um, Chuck, do you just want to kind of give a, an update about what what the city could do? And I know that there's a lot of changes that the state would have to make to even allow us to come up with some flexibility. Right. So um, as far as uh, waiving the fees or even allowing them to be delayed would take legislative action by the state legislature. We cannot do that on our own. Uh, the, the one thing that really we have the capability of doing if we so choose would be to reduce the fees. So in um, a number of our fees are set, that, so this, the state sets a range for a number of the fees. Where there is a range, we, we charge the maximum fee. So there are a couple of fees where we could conceivably change our ordinance to reduce the fee. Now, that would have to be across the board. It would not be only to bars that don't serve food. It, it would have to be across the board to all members of that particular mm -hmm. class. That is something that can be considered. Um, obviously, there are knock-on effects, and I'm sure that's why Meredith is here uh, to talk about that, because if you do reduce that fee, even if you do it for one year, that is a, a revenue source for the clerk's department, and um, at, you are probably certainly aware that, that um, this has been an expensive year for the clerk's office because of elections mm -hmm. and will likely continue to be. Um, so there, there is a connection between those two issues. Meredith, do you want to say anything or add anything? Or you should go to a mic if you do. Yeah. Though. Just curious, want your input? Well, and I just have the. We we're already seeing some decrease. I think when we went through it, because we were looking at our um, revenues for um, beverage operators, we're already like thirty eight hundred dollars less than what we were last year, which should pick up should the safer at home order and things open up again. Um, the league did send out the minimums and maximums um, for the different class licenses that I have a copy of as well. If you wanted to see what the minimums and maximums are, um, we have not, we've only heard from maybe one bar um, in our office okay. so far, but what we've been doing right now is paying the 27 to get this process started so they can start their renewal and then paying the balance of that at the end of June when they would pick up their license. So that's what we're doing right now. Would, would there, there's, we can't do anything sort of like reducing the fee just for the time that, you know, let's say like the safer at home order is in or would it have to be like for a whole year or what would that it's it's a it's a license fee, yeah. so it's it's a fee for each year. Okay. So you could reduce it for the 2020 license, but that would be the reduction. Then. Okay. The the other thing, you know, I I did forget to mention that that's the other thing that they've done, and we do have the ability to do that, which is basically to only charge the initial fee at the time of application, and normally we would charge the entire fee, um, but. Uh, at this point, they could uh, um, the the license can be granted based on the initial fee, and then it would only be issued once they pay the remainder of the fee. The issue that comes is if they pay that portion after July first, there are some issues that come that that come along with continuity of business. Okay. Any other questions? I. Julie, do you want to? Julie went through right. the different classes, what what licenses we have, how many of each, okay. and what our revenue source is for each of those. So right now we have um, thirty Class A beer licenses. Um, so that's like your mini marts. Okay. Those are charged two hundred and thirty dollars per year. Okay. Um, so right now that's about sixty nine hundred dollars. Um, the Class A liquor licenses, we have 13. Those are going to be um, your grocery stores, your full liquor licenses. Those typically have the beer also. So those are two, um, 230 plus the 500, so 730 annually. 
Um, so that one looks about 9,490 that we see annually. We have 24 um, Class B beer licenses. So those are like your restaurants that only serve beer. Um, so again, those are $100 a license. Um, and then we have 12 that um, typically have a combination of a Class B beer and then a Class C wine license, and that's another $100. So between the two, um, it's 3,600. And then our big ones is the bars. We have 112, and uh, those are $600 a piece. So that's quite a substantial amount, okay. about 67,000. So, and then we have a publication fee and a background check that's also charged. And then there's some other miscellaneous fees, especially for the bars that have amusements, but those can't be prorated or, uh, or not charged, so. What about the individual bartender license? Those are $57 every two years. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Moving along, um, next meeting date will be May 13th. Seeing that we've exhausted the agenda, is there such motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Barb. Oh, Barb is back on. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 Chair votes aye. We are adjourned at 531. Thank you, everyone. Aye.